Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters. And yes, we got some exciting Friday the 13th news to talk about here. Yeah, we are talking about the bloody disgusting article that was just released a little earlier this afternoon uh, covering a possible Friday the 13th reboot starting to emerge. Now, this has nothing to do with the show. This is uh, Sean S. Cunningham, who is kind of the, uh, I guess, if you want to look at it as a divorce, you know, you got uh, one side and the other side. This is the other side uh, differentiating itself from the TV series we're getting, uh, who has now kind of decided, you know what, you guys are having your Christmas. We're going to have ours. Uh, so, you know, this is... Uh, this is pretty interesting, I gotta say. We we also have a couple of other nuggets in here of some possible uh, pretty neat projects coming from Sean and his camp. Um, but yeah, overall, we're going to dive into the article here, talk about specifics. But uh, Luke, we were just talking a couple seconds here before I hit the camera uh, or hit record. And uh, you were, uh, you're, you're a little uh, on the fence about this, let's say. Well, yeah, I guess you could say on the fence. Um, I, I think we're still kind of in a gray area in terms of uh, what the rights are with the TV show as well, because I assume that Sean S. Cunningham had to be involved in in some aspect of it, right? Because they said they're going to mm -hmm. go everywhere with it. So it's kind of I already thought there was more of a reconciliation, I guess, to be to begin with in terms of the television show. But that's not even, I guess, close to being accurate if we're we're kind of developing for for uh the big screen as well um and i don't understand again i maybe that those details will come out a little farther um down the line i don't know but like looking at this news here where it's just like okay i'm i guess i was slightly surprised that this kind of made news because i guess what we're more so talking about here is a green light for a script that i guess sean s cunningham has given his blessing on for uh for it to be worked on and within hopes that both sides will come together and i mean like i guess we've been dealing with the the legality of this whole friday 13 thing for several years now and i guess for me it's more so news that we're this is the first script that's being worked on in hopes of this i figured there'd be a handful of scripts out there already trying to see what works and what doesn't um so like for me it's like um yeah, we're all hoping that everyone comes together, but like to say like, hey, we're going to work on the script in hopes that this happens. It's just like, oh, OK, I mean, cool, but I, I don't know if it really goes anywhere. Yeah. So, you know, from what I understand um, with the series, they are working with Sean S. Cunningham's uh, production company, Horror Inc. So uh, one of the executive producers of that is one of the uh, co-founders of the company there. So they have their blessing on that side. So I can only imagine um, with this being uh, as publicized as it is uh, from Bloody Disgusting, who are very reputable. I mean, we use them all the time on this show for a lot of our news coverage. Um, you know, and the fact that they're putting this out there, I have pretty good faith to believe that um, when more details start to arise, we'll see that Victor Miller probably uh, on his side of the camp has uh, at least expressed interest in allowing this to happen. Because otherwise, why why would you break this story? Uh, why would everybody come forward and leak all these details if nothing more than just to say, hey, we have a Friday the 13th headline in the in the the stream? You know what I mean? Like, it, it just seems like uh, to me that we don't have a lot of information right now. And just like with the series, when it first got announced, we didn't have a lot of information right off the top. If it wasn't for Fangoria, uh, you know, talking to Brian Fuller, we would have probably had to have waited a couple weeks um, until we got more information. Um, so it's one of those things for me where it's like, I'm still sitting here thinking that this sounds positive. Now, there's a part of this that sticks out to me that is very interesting. And I don't know how to fully feel about it. And, uh, you know, to kind of dive into things here, uh, we're basically talking about, um, so the writer, uh, Jeff Locker and director Jeremy Weiss are working with Sean S. Cunningham on a new property. Uh, it's called the night driver. 
Um, sounds pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you, they have a little write up here in the, uh, I did take a look thing, at so it. did read it. Yep. Yeah. I mean, sounds neat. Could be fun. Uh, they say they got a couple of real big names attached to it. So only time's going to tell and see how that pans out for them. Um, but then they said, you know, while developing that, of course, they got on the topic of a couple of the other properties that Sean has had his name into, uh, you know, before we dive too deep into the Friday, the 13th, uh, rabbit hole here, why don't we talk about how house is apparently one of those projects, which have you seen house? Uh, yes, I've seen house and I started mm-hmm. house too, but I, I never fully committed to it. I enjoy, uh, the house movies. Mm-hmm. Well, the first one, anyway, the second one seems pretty entertaining as well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, seeing that. Um, you know, I, I remember watching that, um, I think maybe it was during quarantine initially. And, um, mm. I'd always thought I would love to see this kind of transported from the eighties into nowadays to see what kind of, um, what we would get out of that. And, um, not the kind of harp on, on things here, but, it, and that was one of my feelings here where, uh, we're kind of latching on to the Friday the 13th news. This was bundled into several different things uh during in that article i believe so we had the house news we had the night driver and then we had friday 13th and it seems like um it it, everyone kind of zeroed in on the friday 13th stuff where it could be you know it could be just chatter and and talking and we're we're here to talk about the night driver we do mention friday 13th and then it's like okay let's put up the the jason Voorhees mask and, and now we're talking about friday 13th where it's like there were two different other things going on in that interview uh in that article and then it it just seemed like everyone kind of latched onto the friday 13th tidbit that's fair but also i i don't want to just totally cast aside what was said here about that because like you're right it was bundled it was kind of like a buy one get two free kind of thing uh for everybody here but um you know obviously during the interview here uh, he, uh, Locker states, uh, Sean hires me to rewrite, uh, do a rewrite on the night driver. And after working so closely with the director, Jeremy Weiss, uh, him on that, we naturally got to talking Friday the 13th and house, uh, Germany. I pitched our dream reboot for Friday the 13th with Sean's blessing to keep developing it with him. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and we already kind of stated that that was happening, but this is where things kind of get interesting for me. So Locker continues, obviously the prequel TV series has reignited interest uh, about a new film. So we're hoping the surrounding excitement will inspire both sides to come together and give us Jason on the big screen again for the first time in 14 years. But we also have a plan B for a sequel to the original. We think fans will absolutely love and should avoid any legal entanglement. Now that is really the part that I latched on to through all of this. So it's like, yes, are they saying we really hope that we can get both sides together here, crossing our fingers that everything's going to work out and they're going to let us make movies considering, you know, with the series and the popularity of Friday the 13th, you know, it's already out there. We know that if the if they release a movie, it's going to make a buttload of money, uh, no matter the quality. Um, so it's one of those things where it's like, it's there. They're kind of hoping for it. But this plan B, that is really what I, I wanted to talk about here is kind of just how, what do they mean by that? Like what could potentially be this sequel to the original? Like, are we talking about like something completely different here? Are we ta- They say it's going to make the fans happy and avoid uh, legal entanglement. So it's kind of like, are they thinking about saying, we're going to pick right up like the events of the first film are still canon, but we're just going to redo the entire series now. And we're going to start from two and go from there. Maybe play on to the legend of, uh, you know, Friday the, uh, or Jason Voorhees and have him kind of reemerge for the first time again. Like, I don't know. That's just very interesting to me. Well, and and that's, again, where we get into the randomness of the the legal issues, because it wouldn't be Jason Voorhees at that point, right? Because no, he owns he owns um, the look and everything. Uh, I think he can call him Jason. I don't know if he can call him Jason Voorhees, though. Okay, that's what I was curious about. If Mm -hmm. I didn't think he could use the Voorhees name. I don't think he can use Mrs. It appears in the original script. But again, you know, splitting hairs, who knows what exactly uh, we're going to get from that uh what the whole legal thing entails um i just feel like 
like you're saying, plan B. Yeah, I could feel like this could be, you know, maybe we, we're transported up into current time and then we're just dealing with, oh, yeah, remember that event that happened way back in the day? And then we're kind of dealing with um, more so the, the area of Crystal Lake, which I'm guessing we we're not calling Crystal Lake, but um, that area tends to be more so a haunted ground rather than anything else. But again, at that time, it, is our appetite already is it going to be there after i'm assuming by the time that would even make its way into potentially either in talks to be on the big screen or in production that we're already going to be seeing our jason Voorhees, uh, you know in, in the peacock television series slashing people up so at that point are we already going to get what we want or uh, you know i think as horror fans yes we're hungry for all the content that we can get but in terms of a general audience to say here's the pitch it's tied into Friday the 13th, but there is nothing about it that we can touch from the very first script. So it, it becomes a hard sell, I think, from uh, not to diehard horror fans, because we're going to be there regardless, but to a general audience to be to struggle with, wait, is this Friday the 13th? Is this not Friday the 13th? The people that don't know the ongoings of the legal issues. Yeah, and I think that's very interesting that it's like, yeah, you're right. We we from what it sounds like, we are going to get everything we want from this series. At least that's how they're pitching it. Yeah. Like we're that's going fine. to be able to get all the iterations that we can possibly imagine of Jason. And that's kind of their hope. Um, everybody's kind of predicting they're gonna go uh movie by movie each season, um, and kind of do a different take or a different interpretation on that. Um you know, which sounds fun. It sounds cool. It definitely sounds like it would wet everybody's whistle uh, to say when it comes to Friday the 13th content. But yeah, for this to be a plan B, um, it would be interesting, wouldn't it? To kind of have them rework the mythology. And yes, I know with um, this kind of being, you know, uh, a theatrical experience, let's just say sort of because i mean at the end of the day we don't even know that like it could be a streaming movie it could go to yeah. one of these services at any point and you know then do you think people are a little more accepting of that are they a little bit more to sit here and just say if they don't have to go to a theater and see it that you know maybe general audiences could get on board ultimately we don't have enough information about it to really say what it is like i'd love for them to kind of do a follow-up oops sorry about that uh plan b just to kind of uh, give us a sense of what exactly they mean by that. Because, I mean, all they say is that it's like, oh, it's going to satisfy fans. But, of course, they could just be saying that. And it's like, I'm sure David Gordon Green and our company were like, oh, this is going to make the fans so happy uh, yeah. with Halloween ends. Um, so it's one of those things for me where it's like, yeah, it, it could go either way here. But me choosing to be the optimist, me choosing to be a super you know, super fan of Friday the 13th here. I am going to keep my fingers crossed and uh, say my prayers at night that I think that they can probably at this point uh, sway Miller and company to, you know, take a check or take some residuals from whatever this is. And we could potentially get a rebooted Friday the 13th film that, you know, doesn't necessarily have to follow the, um, you know, series as closely, if that's what the series is going to do, like the actual television series, like maybe we can start telling some new stories, you know, because really at the end of the day, all they would really have to get from Miller is the backstory and the name of Voorhees. And the rest of it is just throw the guy in there and tell us a new story, you know, give us Camp Crystal Lake in maybe a different kind of setting, like really give us something fresh. And I think having that, uh, juxtaposition there kind of gives us our cake and we can eat it too you know kind of thing so I'm, I'm trying to remain fairly positive on this yeah um i mean like for me i'm very conservative in my hopes for this just because we've been sitting on the sidelines for so long here um and then when we're looking at yeah it, it's been uh the idea that hey all we have to do is get those initial ideas from victor miller and we're off and running but i think the problem here is um, you know, either we're, we can look at it of one of two ways here. Okay, we're, we're in 2023. This legal issue has been going on for so long now. We're all feeling the wear and tear. We're getting tired. Um, we just want it to be over. So we're going to strike a deal. Or we've all had 
it's all sat and we've all stewed about it. Feelings are hurt. Pride is a factor. Okay, I, even though I'm being offered this giant check, we're not doing it just because I wanted this check in 2018. You did not give it to me. And now I'm not going to come here in 2023 after seeing the success of, you know, Michael being back on the big screen. We're not doing it, you know. So, um, you know, for me, my hope, uh, I absolutely would adore to see as much Friday the 13th content out there as possible. And, uh, you know, if, looking at this for me where I talk about I, I don't like when they necessarily retcon things or reboot things. I think there's a certain uh, integrity, I guess, about things when we kind of have to work our way through everything that's been happening in terms of like sequels and the parameters that have been set. I would be very intrigued more so from from my perspective to go with plan B because it's like I think it's going to inspire more creativity. It's going to be a new story. So I would love to see what they can come up with kind of playing in those parameters of we can't do this and we can't do that and what kind of story we can get because I think that would kind of cultivate a more unique story than just being like, okay, yep, we got all the rights, we got everything, so now now we're off to the races here. So it's like, hey, I think that the Peacock television series, from everything that we're hearing, sounds pretty positive. It sounds like we're going to get a lot of things that we've been hoping for. Um, so I would love to see this unique plan B situation here and see what they come up with. Yeah, no, I'm kind of on that side too. And, you know, this gets my brain thinking, like, could this have possibly been a strategic move from Cunningham and company there to say, oh, yeah, we'd love to. And it almost reads that way in a sense. You think about it because uh, him saying, you know, we're hoping the surrounding excitement will inspire both sides to come together and give us Jason on the big screen again. You know, just say the, the wording there. It's just kind of interesting how it's like inspire. So it's definitely they're going into this knowing it's like we don't have a done deal here. We don't know what's going on. But we also have a plan B for a sequel to the original, which we think fans will absolutely love and should avoid any legal entanglements. A lot more confidence, I feel, in that statement. I wouldn't be surprised if this is just kind of them throwing a line out there to see how we react to this, to see what the, the consensus is. For your statement right there, for them to kind of sift through videos and comment sections and say, how do they feel about that? Yeah. And see, because then it's like, yeah, if they can avoid it and they can do it, I would be very curious to see what the expansion is here and how they're going to do it. Um, but again, you you do walk a fine line there. Because you're right, for general audience goers, maybe it's something where it's like it could even be a little more easily accepted because it's like, OK, yeah, it's the guy in the hockey mask slashing people up. You know, they're going to have a good time at the movies. But for hardcore fans, it's like, could you really, you know, have that Halloween ends backlash there where you guys just go way too different? Yeah. And it's just like, oh, no, we don't like this. And, you know, nothing would kill that buzz for sequels faster than us just being like say we hate it and it's like oh well that sucked and then it's like but at least we have the tv series which is great you know yeah um you know and let me pose one question to you and i want you to forget that you're a huge friday 13th fan <laughs> it happens and, and and you'll take all the content that you can get but where we talk about everything and we always seem to circle back to you know this would be great for long form storytelling this would be a great tv show um now Let's say this all works out and we can get Jason on the big screen. And we know how that turns out. I mean, we have so many installments. Yes, maybe we'll get something better later on with storytelling and things like that. But generally, we know how that works out. Um, do you think you'd be more pleased with a television show where we get a season of 10 episodes with a long, drawn-out story with more kills and slower-paced storytelling where we get to develop and open up a lot of characters? Or do you think... This would be better compiled into an hour and a half, an hour, 45 minute story or like, where do you think you'd be more pleased? I mean, you you're you're putting you me in a corner one. here because I know you're you know that I'm going to say television because, you know, at this moment in time. And it, it's tough, man, because you're telling me to also take away my detach my attachment to the series, because like as a fan, yeah, a TV series sounds great if they're going to follow the way that we're thinking they're going to follow because it's one of those things where it's like yeah we get as a fan i do want to spend more time there i do want to get more but like as a general audience goer i don't know i mean i would probably 
uh, be more like if I if I had no attachment to the series, I think I'd be more excited for a movie just because that's what I am used to seeing with Friday the 13th. Yeah, you know, I think that's what people expect when you say Friday the 13th TV show. If they think about it, they might think about that uh, TV show we had in the late. It was it late 80s, early 90s. I be- I thought it was 80s, wasn't it? But I don't know. Something like that, um, where it was kind of an anthology, like Jason wasn't in it kind of thing. Like, is that what's going to spring to mind? I don't know. But I mean, again, we are in a different era of television. We have things like Game of Thrones and The Last of Us and, you know, uh, Mindhunter and stuff that all just show us. It's like we can have cinema quality stuff here. So it's 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 a tough one for me to answer. Um, but to answer it, I would I would say series. Okay, that's yeah. my heart of hearts. Well, you know, and, and that's what I find intriguing as well, because like even looking at it, even if the TV show doesn't have the amount of gravitas that we're hoping it does, and it falls in line with a lot of the movies that we do see, you get a what an hour a week with Jason just slashing through people, and we we get to do it every week. I think it's a is a lot of fun. So mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, we'll take this any content that we can get a, any which way. So. I'm not going to be picky. I'll be conservative in my hopes um, that we actually get them on the big screen. I would love to actually go into the theater and sit down and watch another Jason Voorhees tale. Uh, but, you know, for me, everything is turning out pretty positive for the the Peacock um, TV series, which is a little more tangible right now. But, hey, we'll wait and see and see if this thing actually pops up and, and we're seeing uh, another Friday 13th property um, in the movie theater here in a few years. That would be exciting. But either way, it's nice to have Friday the 13th back in the headlines in a positive light that is not sitting here just talking about legal proceedings and, you know, uh, stuff that's just we are going to have to wait longer. Nothing's in development. We have a series in development and we potentially have uh, a plan B reboot, whatever it's going to be, uh, if it develops any further from Sean S. Cunningham. So I'm going to take it, man. Uh, I'm going to take it because it's been way too long. I'm ready to see him back on the big screen. I say it every time we talk Friday the 13th. I I want my boy back in any facet that I can get him. And uh, yeah, I I just can't wait. I hope the next couple years are uh, very bountiful and uh, fun for us Friday the 13th fans. It's starting to shape up, so hopefully it all just um, actually translates onto our screens, and we are consuming all the Friday the 13th content here, uh, hopefully within, what, maybe 2023, the start. Fingers crossed. Uh, I doubt it. They, You know, they said, I, I covered this on uh, the Scaries um, this past week, where they said that they haven't even started writing the series yet, so they start in two weeks, so... No, they'll, yeah. power, they're, uh, they'll kill it. Don't worry. It'll, it'll Maybe. Be, I mean, hey, shit, they get Chucky out year after yeah. year, and they didn't even announce Chucky season three until like just recently. So we'll see. But uh, all righty, guys, let us know what you guys think of this news. How you feeling about a Friday the 13th reboot? How you feeling about a house remake and this uh, new film, The Night Driver? You guys got any thoughts on that? Uh, do you think this is going to happen? Do you want this to happen? Do you prefer this or the series? I mean, these are all questions. They need answers. So go ahead and drop a comment below. Let us know what you guys think. And uh, yes, of course, if you're new to the channel here and you're just discovering us, please hit that subscribe button. We are uh, doing all the best to give you the latest and greatest content in the world of horror. And uh, yeah, as far as what we've got on the channel right now, we just did an interview with Kyle Edward Ball, director of Skinamarink. Uh, which is a lot of fun, very informative. I highly recommend checking that out, whether you like the film or not, because I think the dude's super awesome, and he has a lot of great insight into the mind of the modern horror filmmaker, I should say. Uh, and, of course, we got other reviews up, especially for Skinner Marink and uh, the new Kevin Williamson slasher uh, that he co-wrote, Sick. We got that up there. And uh, we just did a breakdown of the new Scream 6 trailer. So lots of great stuff there. Lots of great stuff on the horizons. So definitely uh, keep it here with us. Um, But yeah, I guess that about wraps us up. So uh, until next time, I'm Dylan Newell. And I'm Luke Janesco. And remember, stay scared.